I don't think conspiracy theories per se are always bad. Uh, I think it's good that we're critical of power, that we uh, critically assess the knowledge we take for granted or assume to be true. I think everybody has sort of a very intuitive idea about what conspiracy theories are, but if you try to define them uh, for research purposes, uh, then it becomes a, a lot more tricky. Um, on the one hand, you can uh, sort of take a very literal definition of like a, sort of an explanation of a societal event involving the covert actions of uh, a group of people operating behind the scenes. But when I did my research, I thought that, yeah, then 9-11, the official explanation of 9-11, Al-Qaeda group, or group of people operating behind the scenes to execute the nefarious uh, plan, uh, becomes a conspiracy theory. So that doesn't work. Um, so I have figured out that you need to sociologize the definition of a conspiracy theory and look at uh, what kind of ideas people are being labeled as a conspiracy theory. So in this way, in this re relational definition, I was also able to introduce the concept of power in the definition itself. So which groups in our society have the uh, definition of power to uh, label certain ideas as conspiracy theories. Take it you think my message is disingenuous? Conspiracy sells. So you can say on the one hand it became much more mainstream, while well, people also talk about it, there's TV shows uh, and newspaper articles, it's, it's a common societal topic uh, at this point, so in that way I would definitely say it's more mainstream. But despite the mainstreaming of conspiracy theories, there are still the strong um, stigma surrounding conspiracy theories. So, uh, in that way, we still regard conspiracy theories to be irrational, false, crazy, uh, dangerous ideas. So I think we don't even need to go far in history to see man, all kinds of uh, uh, covert actions, powerful organizations, uh, cover-ups, and all forms of deceit out there. So I think it's uh, a mistake to a priori assume that all conspiracy theories are irrational and false simply because there, has been, there are so many examples in the past of these covert actions. Um, from CIA operations to all kinds of medical experiments that have been uh, performed under false uh, pretenses or banks just recently uh, agreeing in secret on their interest rates, the LIBOR scandal, Volkswagen uh, software scandal, uh, the revelations by Snowden and Assange. There's all kinds of practices and actions happening that we don't really know about. Um, so by definition, seeing conspiracy theories as false is a historical mistake. So I think that the uh, traditional methods of fact-checking to do something about conspiracy theories are ineffective because ironically the truth is not all that matters. Um, so fact-checks operate at the level of uh, facts and try to disprove it. Um, but what you see is that the uh, popularity of conspiracy theories really comes from deeper underlying motivations and concerns and issues and distrust. So these fact checks don't really tackle those uh, underlying issues. Um, and um, yeah, new evidence, new information often don't change people's mind because Believing in something and in knowledge is not only a sort of a cognitive issue. It also has to do with your worldview, with your ideology and with your group membership. So believing something is also being part of a uh, group. Um, and that way um, it's not so much uh, yeah, that new information will change all of these worldviews and ideologies and groups that you're a part of. I only want to believe. Actual proof has been strangely hard to come by. What would you do if your friend is a conspiracy theorist? And I think that's a, a good question. And often people then think we need to get them out of the rabbit hole. We need to tell them what is really true uh, and, and, and make them see the world as we do. So I think the first step that would actually be a good step is to uh, reflect a bit on what your goal is. Why do you want to rescue this friend and what is uh, at stake or what is bothering you? I think you need to avoid sort of the trap of going into a, uh, a discussion where you uh, uh, bring in your own facts and try to convince the other because that will only deepen the rift between you. Um, it's much better to show curiosity. What can you learn from this person? And I think in these conversations you get a more meaningful and more egalitarian exchange of ideas. 
Um, and also sometimes you can even put to practice this uh, identification as critical free thinkers to sort of stimulate the same critical attitude to their own beliefs uh, that they've uh, acquired in the last um, years. And ultimately, if that doesn't work, if you both really like are on different sides, then you need to, to agree to disagree. And I think uh, there's many more similarities that you would have as a friend um, than where you differ from each other.